my great great grandfather. He was an admiral. Well, you are a lucky girl, Amelia. With a beautiful home like this, and parents who do everything for you. I know it, darling. I don't even remember my parents. I was just a baby when they died. It must be heavenly to have a family. Well, from now on, you're elected a member of this family. You'll come and spend all your holidays here, see? Thank you. Amelia Holmes? Yes, love to see you. Dying to see you. Hello, Ethel. Glad to see you, Holmes. You seem to put on a little weight. Uh, just a little, just a little. There they are now. Yeah. Oh, you Goodness, how fat you are. If I hear any more comments on my weight, I'm going to pack up and go right back to India. Oh, <laughs> oh darling. Oh, oh my dear. <laughs> well, my girl, what do you think of our surprise? Oh, it's wonderful. Oh, and Mama, I have a surprise, too. Mm -hmm. I brought Becky home for Christmas. Becky? Oh. Becky who? Becky Sharp, my chum from school. I've met noodles to mother about her. My dear, before you wish you invitation, I think you're I want you all to be very nice to Becky, because she never had anything. Well, yes, yes. <laughs> well, come along in the yeah. Oh, rather. <coughs> Mom and Dad, this is Becky. Mrs. Sedley, awfully sweet of you, of Amelia. We are very glad to have you, my dear. Thank you. And my dad. <laughs> charmed, my dear, charmed. <laughs> and my brother Joseph, Miss Shaw. How do you do? How do you do? Anyone could tell you were from India, Mr. Sedley. You've got that wonderful tropical tan. Oh, really? <clears throat> it's hot in India, you know. No yeah. doubt. <laughs> Begging your pardon, Mary. About dinner, cook wishes to know. Very well, Russell. I'll go and see her. I'm going with you. You'll hardly notice me at all with Joseph or Russell. Oh, my dear. No one can ever come over. Yes, I think it'll fit. Oh, what'll fit what? I brought you a tiger skin, Governor. Oh, very nice, my boy, very nice. It'll look lovely there. Did you shoot a tiger, Mr. Sedley? Oh, yes, lots of them. <clears throat> oh, how thrilling. <laughs> Do tell us about it. Are you sure it wouldn't bore you? Bore me? Why, I'm simply thrilled, Mr. Sedley. I never dreamed I'd meet a man who actually shot a tiger. Oh, it's nothing. Would you uh, like to hear about it? Do tell us. Well, I was visiting my friend, the Maharaja of Baroda, and he said to me, Joseph, old boy, how would you like me to give a tiger hunt in your honor? I said, ripping, old top, ripping. But do you think I'm a good enough shot? He laughed and said, Joseph, everybody knows you are the best shot in all of India. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> So we went out in the jungle, and there... I think it's going to fit. Put your wrap on, dear. You'll catch cold. Hi there, oh, sis, Daddy. Go away! Go oh, away! By Jove, I'm frightfully sorry and all that. Joseph, close the door. Joseph, please go away. Right-o, right-o. Close the door. Hello, Joseph. Hello, George. Girl, buddy. Not quite. Just time for a drink. Good book. Shoot you in bed. Yes, sir. By the way, did you have anything on the 330 Not a thing, worse luck. Hello, darling. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello, Becky, you look wonderful. Don't you think I have the nicest fiancé in the world? I certainly do. If I thought I had a chance, I'd try to steal him. Oh, no, no. Where are you going, Joseph? First to the rich, then the Alhambra, then to a nightclub, and hang the express. By the way, what's wrong with the Alhambra? Why, that funny chap, uh, away from... Good evening, sir. Good evening, Russell. Is uh, Miss Sedley at home? She's just leaving, sir. Oh. Hello, oh, I'm so sorry. I just thought I'd drop in. Well, we're just going to the Ritz. Won't you join us? Oh, that's awfully good of you. 
Hello, Jenny. Hello, Dobby. Hello, Dobby. He's so good. Why, of course, Dobby. Of course, you're coming with us, Dobby. We'll take no excuses. Well, thank you. Yeah, we are. Oh, that's the stuff. Thank you, sir. Uh, not at all. I wanted that. I have. Well, you. Yes. I hope you've a good appetite. I'm rambling myself. He's rambling. Ever been to Brighton? Brighton? No, never. How would you like to come with me for a? Weekend. Lovely place, lots of fun, lots of champagne. Would you really take me? Would I really? Oh. Rather, rather, a lovely place. Why, that's a lively one, wasn't it? Oh. Ah, lots of champagne. Well, cheerio. Here's to Brighton. Brighton and you. Son? Oh, Amelia. I want you to be the first to wish us luck. Joseph just asked me to marry you. Oh, lovely. And What's today, that? We're going to Brighton on our honeymoon. Oh, Becky, I am glad. Now you really will be one of the family. Well, yeah. Joseph, congratulations. Congratulations, old boy. Thank you. Joseph, come on, let's go. No, not now. I've got to see a man about a dog. I'll be right back. Right back. Amelia, shall we dance this one? I really, I really a serious matter. Joseph, my dear old boy, will you take it easy? Uh, I'm in a mess. You must help me. What do you mean, your engagement? Engagement? I didn't say a word. Listen, I simply asked you to Brighton for a weekend. Do you call that, that an engagement? Well, that's an engagement, all right. And uh, what, is, what do you know about it? I once asked a girl down to Blackpool for a weekend. I ought to know. I see. How did you did you get out of it? <laughs> we got four children now. That's what I got out of it. Four children. Going to have. Joseph hasn't been home all night. Oh, no. A boy brought it, Miss. It's for you. Thank you, Russell. And uh, Mr. Osmond's down in the drawing room, Miss. Oh, dear, and I'm not dressed yet. All right. Becky, dear, a note from Joseph. Please make my excuses to Miss Sharp for my behavior last night. I drank too much and have absolutely no recollection of anything that took place. I'm catching the Flying Scotchman in 15 minutes. Will be gone several weeks. In great haste, Joseph. I'm so sorry, dear. Well, I suppose I must forgive him. Becky, dear, do run down and tell George I won't be a minute. Yes, darling. I'd be delighted. And I'll hurry. Well, you know, I'll be seeing lots of Amelia after we're married. But I won't always be seeing you. Flatterer. Your friend Joseph got cold feet. 
He ran away. Yes. No. Joseph's a fool. He doesn't know a good thing when he sees it. My George. Miss Shaw, may I speak to you for a moment, please? Why, yes, of course. I understand from my daughter that you're planning to take a position of government with the family of Patrick Crawley. Yes, I'd be there now if it weren't for Amelia's invitation. My son has been called away to Scotland. We are planning to follow him tomorrow. Will it be convenient for you to be for Queen's Crawley tomorrow? Why? Why, of course. It's been awfully kind of you to have me. We've enjoyed it. I say, Becky. I'm Italian Peck. Peck? Why, are you going? Sorry? Oh, I should jolly well say I am. I'll miss you. I'll give you my address and you may write to me if you like. That'll be splendid. Have you any assistance, do you? Uh, no, uh, no, thank you. I think I can manage. Pardon. Are you looking for someone? A car from Queen's Crawley was supposed to meet my train. Queen's Crawley? Yes. You visiting? No. Governess to Sir Pitt Crawley's little girl. Oh. <laughs> Lucky little beggars. Do you mind? Uh, no, not at all. Do you know Sir Pitt? Yes. A disagreeable old bloke. Oh, <laughs> really? Do you live here, Bob? Yes. From now on, I shall make a point of seeing uh, the old scoundrel much more often. Uh, that must be my car. Uh, yes. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. What is it? If you please, sir, the new governess has arrived. All right. Show her in. Very good, sir. Miss Shaw, it kind of come this way. Yes? If you please, sir, this is Miss Sharp. How do you do, my dear? How do you do? 
down. Have you met Lady Crawley and your little charges yet? I've seen the children, but I understand Lady Crawley is too ill. Lady Crawley is dying. Taking a devil of a long time about it. Oh, you shouldn't. She's been at death's door for ten years, my dear. And there's not a doctor in the county can pull her through. Death's door. Pull her through. Do you get it? <laughs> I do hope I'm going to give satisfaction. I feel sure that you are, my dear. Oh, it's looks awfully interesting. You rang for me, sir? Has a room been assigned to Miss Sharp? Yes, sir. The housekeeper has placed her in the west wing, sir. Oh. Miss Sharp will occupy the red room in the east wing. The red room, sir? Yes, sir. The red room. Yes, sir. <laughs> and yes. she will not dine in the schoolroom like the others. She will dine with Mr. Rawdon and myself. I understand, sir. Oh, Sir Pitt, I feel I'm going to be awfully happy here. I'm sure you are. One of three of us, we only had one umbrella. <laughs> oh, my first wife, my dear. A most disagreeable woman. Oh, yes. I'm sorry to be late, Governor. Ah. Miss Sharp, this is my son, Rawdon. Rawdon, this is the new governess, Miss Sharp. How do you do? How do you do? I wish my father would get me a governess, Miss Sharp. But perhaps you'll take me on, too. <laughs> All right, Parker. <laughs> Rather a surprise, eh? Very agreeable one, sir. Here I saw you. Look where you're going. Oh, I'm sorry. She's a fair caution, ain't she? <laughs> She's a designing little lady. <laughs> Good night. Champagne tonight, if you please. Here, I am to unpack. You want to see her underclothes. That life. <laughs> and so the curate said... No, no, sir, you've got it wrong. It was the bishop who said... Young whippersnapper, will you let me tell my own jokes? <laughs> you tell them so badly, Miss Sharp. Never mind, I'll tell you some afterwards. I wish you would. I must tell the children's stories at bedtime. Splendid. Then uh, I'll tell you some bedtime stories. Bedtime stories. <laughs> My word. <laughs> you know, I had thought of going back to London tomorrow, sir, but uh, I rather fancy I should postpone my trip for a few days. to see if uh, you were being well taken care of. Oh. You're so considerate, Sir Pete. <laughs> you know, Sir Pitt, you oughtn't to be in here. 
frightened? Terribly. <laughs> On my soul, you're a fascinating little devil. <laughs> Why, Sir Pitt? Come on. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, Sir Pitt, with your wife lying ill down the hall. Don't you like me, Becky? Of course I do. But you're not free. But I will be free. Almost any day now. Well? When you can ask me to be Lady Crawley, then I'll listen. Has my father been annoying you? Why, no. Becky. There's a lovely fire burning downstairs in the library. Put on a wrap and come down. Why? Yeah. Please. All right. I won't be a moment. Thank you. Why, Rodden, I thought you said you were going to behave. But I can't behave. You're beautiful, Becky. Fascinating. Becky. Becky, listen. I didn't hear a word you said. Becky, would you be deaf to a proposal? Try me, please. Why don't you let me sharp go to bed, Miss? He's tired. Mind your own business. We can go when we finish the game. You clumsy young idiot! Well, I'm awfully sorry, Governor. I, I seem to have spoiled your little game. I, I'm sorry. I'm really <laughs> awfully sleepy, Professor. Will you excuse me? Yes, yes, all right, all right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Take you on. Oh, I'm sort of sleepy myself. I think I'll turn in. Good night, sir. Good night.
सकता है Her ladyship. She died five minutes ago. Oh. Well, I'm no hypocrite. Don't expect me to burst into tears, do you? Open the door. Hide behind that curtain. What's the matter? Lady Crawley dead. Oh, how dreadful. my house. Pack your things and get out. And as for you, you dirty whelp. The pit, you don't understand. You're a shameless little hussy. Aren't you going to tell him the truth? All right, I'll tell him. I'm not afraid. Rodden and I were married yesterday afternoon. You lie. You lie in your teeth. Here's the certificate. Get out of my house, both of you. And as for you, You'll get none of my money. I cut you off with a shilling. Nice beginning for a honeymoon. Oh, he'll come around all right. Oh, sweetheart, you don't know him. Well, we better call Polly to help us pack. I think we'll take Polly with us. You know, we'll need a good servant. <laughs> you know, Becky, I haven't got a bean. What are we going to live on? Our wits. Did you write again to my father? Yes. The sweetest letter. And it came back unopened. I know how we could make a lot of money. How, oh, sweetheart? Great Scott, Becky. But that's blackmail. Oh, blackmail is an ugly word. Well, I haven't got much honor left, but uh, there are certain limits, you know. It's just an idea. No, no, I think we better stick to bridge. All right. Circle 2135. And Rawdon, please don't get your signals mixed. Hello? Hello, may I? Oh, Amelia. Hello, darling. This is Becky. Yes. We were just wondering if you'd like to and play a little bridge. Yes, love to have. 11,000 points. That's uh, 550 pounds. <laughs> we had a good evening, Amelia. <laughs> Very. <laughs> Better luck next time. Oh, yeah. You are lucky, Becky. I've called them that love. Oh. Well, I think I'll mix some cocktails. 
want to help you, Joe? I'd love to. Excuse me. I feel quite badly about uh, taking all this money. Just a silly. Will you get the orange juice and the ice and the ice sauce to him, please? Oh, there's luck. There's some ice already cracked. Fine. Here's it. Will you cut the lemon, please? Certainly. Will you have it, please? No, thanks. So how did married life agree with you, George? If you must know, it rather cramps a fellow's style. Oh, yes? Will you please? Certainly. There's no hurry. But it's getting late. I think that ought to be cold enough by now. Becky. Oh, George. Yes, dear. You know, you must write a check and then we'll go home. Just coming. I carry that. All right, tomorrow evening? All right. Here we are. Oh, here we are. Uh, doesn't that look good? Just a little nightcap before you go home. Don't forget that check, George. Oh, no, I won't. I think this is a very bright idea of Becky's, don't you? Mm -hmm. Eh, Rodden? Jolly good. Poor Amelia. She is a little separate, isn't she? George played a nice game, did not Yes, a delightful game. How is George? Very well, dear. Quite busy, though. Thank you, Polly. His lordship wants you to call him, my dear. Yes, Polly. Thank you. The trouble with you, my dear, is that you spoil your husband. I love him so much I can't help him. He's the best and kindest husband in the world. Mm. I know. After all, he's a man. You can't trust any of them around the corner. Mm. Oh, George is different. Sugar? That's fun, people. I can't begin to tell you, Becky, how wonderful he is to me. So sweet, so thoughtful. I'm afraid it's terribly old-fashioned, but I'm very much in love with my husband. Well, ask her to come to the phone, will you? Oh, it doesn't matter who it is. Would you have another biscuit? No, thank you, dear. The gentleman want it on the phone. Thank you, Polly. Excuse me, Amelia. Certainly. Hello? Hello, darling. Why, uh, hello, Mr. Witherspoon. Oh, oh, you have someone with you. Why don't you come over and join us, Mr. Witherspoon? I have a charming little friend I'd like you to meet. Mrs. George Osborn. I wonder if she bores you as much as she does me. Oh, by the way, Becky. Has Amelia asked you when Rawdon down for the weekend? Oh, well, she's going to. Yes. All right, I'll see you there. Au revoir. Goodbye. Oh, yes, uh, what are we talking about? Oh, uh, I was just saying, uh, George is so different. Oh. Yes, of course. I must be going there. Hello, Amelia. Well, hello, Rodden. Nice to see you again. Hello, sweetheart. Hello, darling. We want you to come down to Walton Heath for the weekend. I'm afraid I can't. But Becky can. Why not you? Well, the Marcus Sustainers invited me down for the weekend. For some shooting. The influential chap, you know. Pots of money. Ought not to refuse. Of course not. But I'd love to come. That would be lovely. How do I get down to your place? Oh, uh, there's the address. There's a little map on the back. Oh. 
Oh. That's a change. You'll hit quite a number off. <laughs> Now what are you going to do? I don't know. Robert Muddle. Telegram, sir. Oh, thank you. No answer. Anything important, George? Uh, no, darling. Just business, that's all. Oh. No, that's the object ball, dear. But I can't reach it. Don't forget to chalk up. The more you help me, the more I miss. <laughs> it's your shot now, Becky. Oh, I made it. Well, you, you play again now, you know. That wasn't very good. Sorry. Sure <laughs> shot now, Becky. So it is. It's getting late. I think we'd better stop here. We'll be up with hounds tomorrow morning, you know. Oh, yes. Where are we hunting? Didn't you know? The Braven Hills. Oh, George, you know I don't like hill hunting. Can't you get the master to take us over a safer course? Darling, it isn't a bit dangerous. A little stiffish, perhaps, at times. After all, what sport without a little hazard? Yes, nothing makes life so interesting as taking chances. Oh. Are you hurt, Donald? Oh, uh, George. Oh, George, you shouldn't have taken that chance. It's life without taking chances. Well, goodbye, dear. Goodbye. Oh, by the way, Becky, I'm frightfully hard up. Could you let me have a couple of fibers? Can't you find your own fibers? Why do you suppose I got you the job of administering poor George's estate for a meal? If I followed all your suggestions, Becky, <laughs> I'd be in prison. Oh, don't be a fool. She'll never know. All I want is ten pounds. I'm sorry, I haven't got it. Yes. Yes. I was just going to. I'm so glad you called. You darling. At Rumpelmeyer, I'd be delighted. All right, I'll be there. Right, too. 
He's a disgrace to the name of Crawley. Well, Crawley got now. Haven't you heard? No. Why, he was arrested here in the card room this afternoon. No. Yeah, giving bad checks. They took him to Bow Street. Good riddance, too. Bad luck, Crawley. Right. Good night, you. Yes, sure do. Yeah. Oh, stand. Yeah. No, 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 no. If I was you, sir, I'd sit down. Crawling up and down ain't gonna help you. It's an outrage. That's what it is. Keeping me here like this. Well, it ain't my fault, sir. I'm only a doing of my duty. Here we are, sir. Here's the message you've been awaiting. and may bring some more champagne. Then he may go to bed. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Did he give you all then, ma'am? Yes. Wish I could get a marquis. Only men I ever see are bill collectors and greengrocers. Oh, all this. <laughs> there he is now, ma'am. Don't answer at once. Let him wait. Yes, ma'am. I understand. Oh, you do look lovely tonight, ma'am. <laughs> Isn't it lucky the moth is time? There's a Mr. Dobbin to see you, sir. Dobbin? How did you find out? I heard at the club. I've just seen the magistrate and arranged bail for you. You're a real friend, Dobbin. Am I free to go now, Constable? Yes, sir. And you've just signed this here piper. Here you are, sir. Thanks. Good night. Good night, sir. Don't let me see you here again, sir. Becky, you, you know, you, you really get more beautiful every day. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Becky, right there. Oh, you must have some more wine. No, please, I, I say. Yes. Oh, let me, please. Us, my dear. Oh. May I? Oh. You know, Becky, I've been most awfully happy knowing you. Darling. Oh, that's awfully sweet. Oh. Now, now, be a good boy. Oh, Becky. I'd give you anything in the world you wanted. You know that, don't you, my dear? Mm -hmm. What's the matter with you? Nothing better, sir. Why? Nothing, sir. Is Mrs. Crawley at home? Uh, no. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'll do, Crawley. You rotten little... Rodden, I swear I'm innocent. 
Did he give you these? Answer me. Yes. But you don't understand. Oh, yes, I do. Take them off. This is nothing but a trap. You know I've been giving her jewels and money, and now you're both trying to clear out. You clear out before I kill you. I'm going to give you just ten minutes to get out of this house. But, Rodden, you don't understand. I did it for your sake. For my sake? <laughs> you knew I was in that filthy prison. Yet you wouldn't pawn one of Stain's rotten jewels to get me out. But, Rodden... I may be a blackguard, Becky. But at least I was always willing to share with you. It's all over. I never want to see your face again as long as I live. Now, get out. Oh, I, I'm so sorry, ma'am. Little fool, why didn't you warn me? I didn't have time. Then hurry up and pack me a suit. Oh, but you're not going, ma'am. Yes. Coming with me? Yes, ma'am. Polly? Yes, ma'am. Here, take these. But this is the master's watch of the I know it, but pack them. Do as I say. Yes, ma'am. Telegram, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, any answer, sir? No. No answer. Very good, sir. Thank you. Read this. Why, Ron, that makes it rich, doesn't it? Title, dates, and all that money sells now, isn't it? And that makes me Lady Crawley. It just came. I want you to know what you've missed. Oh, Ron, can't we? Isn't it... So Get out. And if ever you dare to use the name of Lady Crawley, I'll find you no matter where you are and... I'll kill you. Shall we hop 
been for a little bit. Oh, I don't think that's the kind of place Amelia would care to go into. Only the riffraff go there. You know, the riffraff are sometimes interesting in uh, foreign places like this. You go in, Joseph. We'll wait here for you. Right, oh. Sit down, now. By Jove, I've left my money at home. Oh. Well, take this. And I hope it brings you luck. Thanks, old chap. Toodaloo. Goodbye. Don't be long, Joseph. Oh. Remember me. Why, it'd be quite impossible to forget you. Did you? Uh, Mr. Mahat Champagne, World War 1960. Come in, then. But Joseph, you haven't changed a bit. No? No friend of yours outside. Amelia. Really? How is the darling girl? Is she married again? No, not yet. Poor old Dobbin is still hoping. <laughs> Good old Darwin. I remember him. He was nice. Drinking? Yes. Here you are. Amelia, I've waited so long. Darwin, you're a wonderful friend. But I can't remember you. George has been dead for five years. Aren't you ever going to... But Darwin, he's still alive in my heart. I understand. What number? and get that brother of yours. He's probably forgotten all about it. You wait here? All right. Right. I won't be a minute. All right. I know you've fooled a lot of men in your life, but I'm afraid I've seen through you from the start. You know, you've only considered one person all your life, yourself. The men have only meant one thing to you. What can I get out of them? 
men have only wanted one thing from me. I just made them pay. You know, you may not believe it, but there is such a thing as true love in this world, and there are decent men. Do you know any? I knew one. George Alton. Is it his sainted memory that keeps Amelia from marrying you? Please. I'd rather not discuss Amelia with a woman of your type. Good night. Waiting downstairs in case I try to rob you. Please, Betty, go. Don't be so bitter. I'm sorry I came. Do you love him? Then why don't you marry him? I'd rather not. I'll tell you why. Because you're a blind little fool. You're worshipping the memory of a man who was a dirty, rotten cat. How dare you? Do you remember the night we were playing billiards? Yes. George received a telegram. Right there. Here it is. Read it. Give this to Dobbin. Maybe he'd like to know what a decent fellow his old pal George was. Becky, please go. There's nothing more to be said. He doesn't want you to associate with a woman of my type. Hello? Why, hello, Joseph. Why, yes. Why, of course. Oh, I'd love to. to leave my house at once. I am quite satisfied you were deliberately cheating. You will be buying the sum of five pounds. And I warn you, the next time you appear before me, I will have no alternative but to commit you to jail. I'm sorry, miss. You can try somewhere else. But ten bob's all I can lend you on this. Take it or leave it. No more excuses. You owe two weeks rent already. I'm sick of waiting. Pay up or clear up.
Joseph. Joseph. Hello. Drunk, eh? Piece of luck. Ran into your sister again. Look here. I told you to leave Amelia alone. Now, listen. You're not to sponge her anymore. You've been doing it for years. You got 500 pounds from her on a cock and bull story that it was for charity or something yes, or a... It was for charity, my lord. After all, charity begins at home, doesn't it? But you've taken money from her since. And I won't have it. I may be bad, but there's a limit to everything. Well, anyway, she gave me a little something. Afraid there won't be any more, though. The Darwin's on to me. You'd better let me have this. Oh, no. No. This is going to be very carefully invested with the new clothes. No. And then what? And then, we're going to wangle some invitations. After all, you still know a few rich people. You know, Joseph, and we always feel that, doesn't it? Joseph. Joseph. 